What if the best way to grow aquarium plants has been sitting in your cat's litter tray all this time? Will cat litter be a good aquarium substrate? And how does it compare to expensive aqua soil, cheap sand, or even specialist bonsai soil? Well, in this video, we'll find out with a month long experiment that will definitely surprise you. Will the dusty cat litter make everything murky? Will the plants take root in a porous volcanic clay made for bonsai trees? Or ultimately, is there a genuine reason that aquarium companies charge so much money for specialist aqua soil? But first, what led me to this experiment and why was it even worth considering? This all takes me back to my overarching method and a little rabbit hole of research that I ended up in a few months ago. As many of you will know, I use estimative index fertilizer dosing in all of my aquariums, essentially an overdose of fertilizer to allow for luxury uptake of nutrients by all the plants, all balanced by a 50% weekly water change and a good supply of CO2. This method is good at providing nutrients within the water column, but I was always intrigued by whether I could improve root growth as well. And this led me to explore CEC, or Cassian Exchange Capacity. In short, think of your aquarium substrate like a rechargeable battery that can absorb positively charged nutrient ions. The higher the capacity, the more nutrients that the substrate can make available to the plant roots. At this stage, just a quick disclaimer. The more my client read about aquascaping, the more he realized how contentious and divided the opinions are about what methods do and don't work, and the precise science behind everything. And as with most things in life, there are multiple ways of achieving the same or similar results. So whilst having a high CEC value makes sense to my client and seems to be a good idea when coupled with estimative index, there is also plenty of opposing opinion that seems to be equally well considered. For example, my client went down a huge rabbit hole at one stage comparing high CEC soils with decomposing organic matter. And there seemed to be some good arguments. However, if you, the viewer at home, are creating lower tech aquariums, my client would certainly recommend exploring aquarium substrates a little more in depth, because there are a lot of methods that might be better suited to you, including adding an undergravel heating cable to simulate natural thermal water flow and organic decomposition. If you would be interested in a video about such a topic, please leave a comment below. My client also asks that you, um, like, and subscribe, whatever that is. Okay, so with that tricky disclaimer out of the way, how did I end up with a CEC experiment that contains bonsai soil and cat litter? Well, it's quite simple really. These baked clay substrates of Akadama and Laterite have high CEC values and have become quite commonplace as an alternative aquarium substrate within more experimental aquascaping communities. The 100% clay cat litters that are commonly available at the pet store tend to be either Laterite or Bentonite, and both have high CEC values. I could be wrong, but it seems that the darker brown cat litter is most likely to be Bentonite, and the lighter grey cat litter is Laterite. Most people also seem to advise that you buy the non-clumping versions and definitely avoid anything that is scented or has additives of any kind. Basically, just look for 100% clay-based and you won't go far wrong. In the UK, I paid £7 for a 20 litre bag and compared to something like Tropica Aquasoil at £15 for 3 kilos, you can see that cat litter presents an enormous cost saving if effective. Obviously the main downside of cat litter is that it was not designed with an aquarium in mind and there are lots of potential discrepancies in product quality, product sourcing and product additives. So I would advise caution, lots of water testing and a gradual introduction of fish if you decide to go down this route. Now Akadama is a porous volcanic clay commonly used as a bonsai soil due to its good balance of nutrient retention and drainage. It basically looks like a crushed lava rock and not dissimilar to products like JBL Volcano Mineral. Akadama is commonly available from garden centres and online stores and it will cost around £7 for a 1kg bag. Now I think there was a time when Akadama represented a cost saving, but it doesn't really seem to be the case anymore. 3 kilograms would cost you about £20, as opposed to £15 for the Tropica Aquasoil. But a lot of the forum articles also point to its longevity as an aquarium substrate compared to Aquasoil. Whilst I won't be able to test this with my experiment, it's certainly a factor to consider if you want to set up an aquarium for a really long time. 
So whilst not a cost saver, I was intrigued to explore what all the fuss is about and whether Akadama performs significantly better because of its high CEC value and of course how it compares to the ridiculously cheap cat litter. And so that leads us to our experiment. I wanted to find out which substrate would perform best when growing a range of different plants under estimative index conditions. And to do this, I repurposed one of my quarantine tanks, divided it in four with some rocks, and added laterite cat litter, Akadama bonsai soil, Tropica aqua soil, and some bog standard sand. My hypothesis, based on the reading I'd done so far, was that sand would perform worst, the cat litter would come second from last, and that the Akadama and aqua soil would perform fairly similarly. I set up the experiment tank with a centrally located light with a simple 6,500 Kelvin LED bulb. I added a simple sponge filter with the outflow sitting centrally for equal flow distribution. I added a CO2 diffuser adjusting the flow to get a green drop checker. And I began to dose the tank daily with one mil of my own DIY all-in-one fertilizer and gave the tank 10 hours of light per day. So we have Tropica Aqua Soil on the back left, Unipac Samoa Sand on the back right, Laterite cat litter on the front left and Akadama bonsai soil on the front right. I picked out some cuttings of roughly the same size and decided on a variety of different plants to test the substrate. So we have Sagittaria subulata and Bacoba australis to test the substrate's ability to support creeping carpet plants, and then Limnophilia sessiflora and Rotala rotundifolia to test the substrate's ability to support taller stem plants with deep roots. I planted all of the plants in the same part of their corner plot so they all get equal light and flow from the centrally located lamp and filter. This was as fair a test as I could manage in just one tank, but obviously it doesn't account for any water chemistry changes which would impact all of the plants equally. Nevertheless, it feels like a relatively good setup in which to establish a few key things. Which substrate produces the quickest growth? Do plants look particularly nutrient deficient in any of the substrates? And do the plants successfully carpet and establish themselves? And here's what happened. So over the first week or so, we don't notice any major changes with the plants. This is kind of to be expected as the plants settle in. However, by day 14, we can see visibly quicker growth occurring with the Limnophilia sessiflora that is planted in the bonsai soil. It's by far the tallest plant. However, the cat litter Limnophilia is actually turning out to be a much bushier cutting and is growing pretty well too, with three stems emerging. As you can see from the angled shots, the one stem in the Tropica aqua soil is only as tall as one of the three stems now growing in the cat litter, and is only growing at the same pace as the stems planted in the sand. The main thing, however, is to look at the slightly more difficult Bacopa australis. At day 14, it's starting to establish fairly well in the cat litter, the bonsai soil, and even doing okay in the sand. However, in the aqua soil, it is actually starting to melt. This is even more obvious at the three week mark, when you can see that the Bacopa is probably established the best in the cat litter, with bonsai soil coming in second place, sand in third, and the Tropica aqua soil a distant fourth. Flash forward to week five, and you can see that the limnophilia is taking over the whole tank, as you might expect. The bacopa in the aqua soil is starting to recover, but ultimately the bacopa in the bonsai soil and the cat litter are growing much more healthily. The other two plants really don't offer as much of an insight, I'm afraid. I'd say that the Sagittaria and the Ritala both look marginally more healthy in the bonsai soil, and are growing equally well in both the cat litter and aqua soil in joint second place. However, there's certainly not a marked difference in health or speed of growth for any one substrate. Time will tell, I guess. But the main takeaway is this. A 35 pence per kilogram bag of cat litter did not fail to grow plants as well, and in some cases much better, than a five pound per kilogram bag of aqua soil. And when you start to go over what we are trying to achieve here, it's not that surprising. As I said, we were dosing this tank the whole time with a daily dose of all-in-one fertilizer as per the daily estimative index calculations. Because both the cat litter and the bonsai soil have such high cash and exchange capacity, they were able to store some of these excess nutrients and make them available to the roots. But substrate is only one part of the plant growth process, and they are very efficient at taking nutrients from the water column as well, which is why it isn't surprising that with estimative index dosing, we even achieved half decent results with just some simple sand. 
Now at this stage you might be thinking, why am I not raving about the bonsai soil? Clearly it performed the best and is arguably the best substrate you could buy, especially for a planted aquarium you intend to keep running for years and years. But this channel is all about making aquascaping accessible to everyone, and the fact that the cat litter performs so well is what I want to highlight. Now that I have some decent insights, I'm going to be starting to scape a lot more often with cat litter as a substrate. Of course, in the future, I will also cap it with a decorative sand, since you cannot argue that it's not the best to look at. But for something so cheap and so easily available, I would encourage everyone to give it a go. Just remember to test your water parameters and only buy 100% clay based with no additives or scents. Now, of course, a lot of what I spoke about during this experiment relates to estimative index. So to find out all about that, you're going to want to watch this video next and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Akadama Akadama Aquasoil Sand Akadama Akadama Aquasoil Sand Cat Litter Cat Litter Cat Litter Akadama Akadama Aquasoil Sand